Hi, this is Mathematics for Social Justice by Mark Roth. So today I want to give you some worksheets that might be used in an explicit instruction individualized classroom. So for a lot of my career, I taught in a juvenile justice center and I had students come in of various ability levels, but the class size was always 15 or less, which was small enough that I could move around and help students individually. To be efficient, I had sheets that I could correct quickly and I either had coded answers or answers that fell into patterns. And I'm not here to take a side in the uh, math wars. <laughs> I'm a big believer in problem solving. I'm a big believer in group activity. But in this particular situation where I had students coming in, mostly remedial, and they needed some confidence, in this situation, explicit instruction and a lot of practice was beneficial and it was the best way I could figure out how to teach in that situation with my skills at the time. And also uh, teaching problem solving, especially problem solving groups, that takes a more skillful instructor and it's possible a, a, an instructor earlier in the career is not quite ready for that kind of teaching. So this kind of teaching has its merits. Okay, so let me give you an example of what I did. So here the students would be practicing uh, two-digit multiplication, and for me to come to them and correct their paper quickly, I worked out the answers ahead of time, and they fell into codes. So here we have two and three adding to five, one and four adding to five, and then six and six, seven and seven, eight and eight, and nine and nine. Another sheet that I have is division by nine, and we have 7 times 8 equals 56. 5 times 9 equals 45. 7 times 6 equals 42. Okay, another sheet I have where you're dividing a three-digit number, actually a four-digit number by 8, and the answer is 9 times 8, 72. And 7 times 9, 63. And I have a sheet where you're dividing a four-digit number by, by seven. And notice the answer. Four times three is equal to 12. Two times six is equal to 12. And I have a sheet where you divide a four-digit number by six. And here we have four times three is 12. And three times five is 15. Another sheet I have is called dividing by 2. Let's see if I can do this in my head. That's going to be 500 plus 50 plus 26. That's 576, I believe. And then that's going to be 250 plus 38, 288. And 144, 72, 36, 18, and 9. This is the, actually the, most, the rightmost column on the page. The previous numbers end with um, 7, 5, 3, and 1. Another sheet I have is called dividing by 3. And they're, they're giving five columns. This is the leftmost column. And they just divide by 3 all the way down. And uh, instead of writing all the answers, I'll just give you the bottom answers too. And the next columns have a bottom of 3, 5, 8, and 13. And notice these are Fibonacci numbers. 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13. Another uh, four sheets that I have are called Lost on the Number Line. Uh, notice that um, I'm dealing with multiples of 9 and multiples of 13. And 9 or 13 are relatively prime, which means they have no common factor other than 1. In that case, there's going to be only one spot on the number line between 0 and their product, the product of 9 and 13. There's only going to be one spot where this will be a multiple of 13 and this will be a multiple of 9. How would we solve this then? Um, well, we'd start with the bigger number and list the multiples of 13. 
but instead of just listing them, let's just do them in our head. So this would be 13 and this would be 15. That doesn't work. 15 is not a multiple of 9. So let's try 26 and 28. That doesn't work. Let's try 39 and 41. That doesn't work. Let's try 52 and 54. That works. So that's uh, 52 and 54. Okay. So um, I have four sheets of this kind of worksheet. So this is another kind of lost on the number line sheet. On this one, we're told this is 72, but we're not told what this is. We're only told it's a multiple of 11. We can try the multiples of 11 in order. So if we start with 11, and then uh, there's seven spaces. Well, if you take 11 from 72, you get uh, 61. Seven does not divide evenly into 61. So let's try 22. 22 from 72 is 50. Seven does not divide evenly into 50. So let's try 33. 33 from 72 will take away 3 first and get 69, and then take away 30 and get 39. 7 doesn't go into 39. So let's try 44. 44 from 72. First, you take away 4, you get 68. Take away 40, you get 28. 7 does go into 28. So this is going to be 44. And 7 goes into 28 four times. So this is going to be um, four, 48, 52, 56, 60, 64, 68. So I have four sheets of this kind of lost on the number line. I have a couple of sheets. Um, this is only the part of the uh, network, but you just have to label each point. This point, for example, would be um, not too hard to find. First, you would take 51 and subtract 15, and that would be 36. And then what I would do with students is suppose that's a frog, and the frog goes jump, jump, jump. How many jumps was that? Three jumps. So we're we're taking that uh, 36 from this subtraction and dividing by 3, and you get 12. So you add 12 to 15, and you get 27. Add 12 again, you get 39. And you solve for these numbers the same way. So what would that be? That would be uh, 108. 108 divided by 3. That would be 30, um, 36. So you add 36 to this and you get uh, 63, add 36 to this and get 99, add 36 to this and get 135. I also have a sheet where you're multiplying a three-digit number by a three-digit number, and the answers all follow this code. It's a Fibonacci thing, mod 10. So 2 plus 5 is 7, and 5 plus 7 on a clock with 10 numbers would give you 2 instead of 12. And 7 plus 2 is 9, and 2 plus 9 is 11, where you only show the 1 of 11. So the 1's column number. So I have a sheet of this. I have four sheets that... Uh, are either 18th, 19th, 20th, or 21st century arithmetic. And the idea here is you should do the multiplication without multiplying. You should either add or subtract to get the answers. So when you go from 99 times 21 to 98 times 21, you're losing 21. So all you have to do is take the previous answer and subtract 21, which would make that 2058. And again, here we're subtracting 21 again, which makes this uh, 2016. No need to actually multiply. So I have a lot of these problems on each sheet. I also have a sheet where you cross out unnecessary add-ins. So for this problem, we can't use all these add-ins. It would add up to too much. So what we do instead is first we realize that 37 times 3 is 111. Now this happens to be 37, 
And this has to be 37 times 2, 37 times 4, 37 times 8, 37 times 16. So we're able to use binary on this. So this is 1 plus 2 times 37. In other words, it's 3 times 37, and 3 times 37 is 111. So we can cross out all these. Now, on this one, we're going to need 6 times 37. And this is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 times 37. So we want 6 37s. So what binary numbers add up to, add up to 6? Well, this is 1, 2, 4. It, it turns out 2 and 4 add up to 6. So if we cross out this and this and this, this is 2 times 37 and 4 times 37. It's 6 times 37, which doubles 3 times 37, which gives you 2, 2. So the student has to do all the problems all the way to 999. You know, and before that, 888. Always with the same column of numbers, which, you know, all you have to do is cross out some of them. I also have a sheet where you have to add numbers, um, but you can only use one through nine for both the, for both the digits of the numbers you're adding and the answer. If the answer is 486. Um, I have to fill this in with the other numbers between one and nine. Now, first, let's try to figure out where nine could go. Nine can't go here in this column, and nine can't go in this column because nine and nine would be 18 but you can't use 8 twice. And you could also go 9 and 8 with a carry of 1, but the 8's already been used. So the 9 has to go here, which makes this 7. All right, so then when you're making 4, this has to be um, a 1. It's either 1 and 2 or 1 and 3, depending on the carry, but we know 1 has to go there. So to make 8, we can't go... Here's a carry of 1, so these two numbers add up to 7, and we can't use a 1. So to make 7 without a 1, it has to be 2 and 5 or 3 and 4. Either way, we're going to carry 0, which makes this a 3. So this can't be 3 and 4, it has to be 2 and 5. So at this time, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. At the end of this video, you're going to be seeing sheets that you can use in an individualized math program. And once again, I want to emphasize, please don't, please don't think that uh, this kind of teaching is, is not good. The problem solving in groups is the only way to teach. It's not the only way to teach. Um, there's more than one good way to teach, but I'm not taking sides in the math wars.